they were really neat. They were really neat to the continuity to to show that that f x is larger or equal y, and f x is smaller or equal y, which which implies that f x is equal y. So, if the function would not be continuous, it could happen that that here would be here would be the the y line. But the, f the point here would not be defined, and it would be some. It would have some different values. So, so we have this sequence of a ends and and b ends going to it, and really, all this would be satisfied. But then the then the function at the point x would would jump up, and this is not what not what we want. So, uh, so basically, basically what we have we have um, a limit of the we have a um, basically um, limit of of f a n as n goes to to infinity, and the question is whether this is equal to f of of uh, limit a n. Yeah, basically, basically whether we can we can commute these two these two things whether we can commute limit and and the function f and this is not true in general but this is true if the function f is continuous yeah, so so yes if f is continuous and why um, it's not so this is not so not so not so difficult difficult to see Basically, what we have is that, the, that uh, since this this thing is is converging to to some value x, then the distance from x is getting smaller and smaller. And since the function is continuous, what should hold is that that also uh, the values are getting have smaller and smaller differences. Yeah. So so basically, if we are at at point at point x how oh, how oh. uh, so so I will I will make more space um, okay so so now uh, what what we have uh, if we are at um, at some point some point x uh, yeah uh, okay so so um, Basically, why 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 this why this should hold? So we know that that this this a n is is going going to some x. So it's getting closer and closer. So what happens with the with the with the values of of the of the function? So uh, and and the values are of course uh, the function f is defined for for f x. Yeah. So so what what happens? The function is is continuous in 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 the point x. So. Um, f is is continuous at x so uh, by by the definition definition of the of the continuity of the of the of this uh, of this function we we know that change of the values is is very small yeah so so basically we have we have this um, this uh, for every epsilon for every difference there exist exist some some neighborhood around the, the the change of the values around x is smaller than epsilon, but since we are l limiting, we have limit of of n going to x. After some time, we will get inside of of this x x value x value neighborhood of of this delta neighborhood, and then we know that that this uh, the value f a n is also very very close to to f x. Yeah, so if we want to show that f value of of f x is equal to to limit of these things, we need we need to show that uh, this uh, limit gets arbitrary and arbitrary closer to the value of x, and this is satisfied by the continuity. Yeah, so so if I draw a picture of this, so what what this this really means is that um, okay, so we have this this value x here. And now we have some sequence a n going going to it. So a one, a two, 
a3, a4, a5, a6. Yeah, we're going closer and closer towards uh, towards the towards the point of point x. But now we we know we basically we need to show that, that this value f a n gets arbitrary close. close to to fx but this is satisfied because a n gets arbitrary close to x and if x is very very cool if, if a n is very close to x then by the continuity f a n is very very close to to fx so this is satisfied by the by the continuity yeah so so now we know we know that we can we can commute this this limit so basically a n is is going to x so f a n is equal equal to uh, to f x, yeah. So limit of of f a n is is going is, is f x. We're going from the left, and we're going from the from the right. And now uh, also we we need to show that it's uh, not possible that a n is is going going. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, sorry, it's it's uh, since um, values f n are bounded from below by y. Yeah, it's not possible that f x would would jump over the y because f is continuous. So as a n is getting closer and closer to x, it's still larger than y. So it's not possible that that x would would jump here. So so if if it would be this this case here, then we're getting closer and closer from here. But now here is a jump here. Yeah, so it's these all these values here are below y, and now it would it would jump here, and this is not possible. Yeah, so so we we conclude in, in such a case. So so basically we know we know we know all all these things. Yeah, so uh, it's also, it was probably pretty pretty chaotic, but uh, really the idea is we take these two sequences and they, they they approach approach this this point x from left and from right, and from one side they are always larger, and from the other side they are always smaller. And now, uh, since the function is continuous, then then this this limit cannot cannot change much. So we so we have a limit of functions, a limit of values, which all of them are smaller than y, then. Also, their limit has to be smaller or equal to y, and and similar similar from the other side. So this 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 uh, red red box here is, is satisfied, and we know f x is equal y. Okay, so so this is this is uh, one of the one of the most uh, most important and most most basic basic statement about uh, statements about uh, continuous functions. So. If we have this this intermediate uh, value theorem, we immediately know that the function is somehow behaving like a, like a nice nice curve from one point to the another. Yeah, in, in theory, it does not have to be like so nice. It could it could be a little strange, but uh, but uh, I'd say it's it's still it's still behaving uh, reasonably. Yeah, so there are no no jumps, but you can you can have like f things like sine one over x. And uh, this function is is continuous uh, for every every positive number. But the the graph of of graph of this uh, this function looks like something like this. Uh, so so it's like getting faster and faster as we as we go to zero. But that's not a problem because everywhere around, uh, everywhere far enough from the zero, it's it's slow so enough. Huh? So, okay. So. Um, let me move to to um, another important theorem, which uh, this this theorem is is very famous and actually it can be it can be generalized to to much more complicated cases. But uh, in this setting, this this says that uh, not only the intermediate values are found on the interval, but also extremes. So this is called ext extremes uh, theorem. And uh, what it says, okay, so suppose I have a closed interval a and b, and I have continuous functions def function defined on this interval. So what it means that inside of 
this interval there exists a global minimum and global maximum uh, inside also mean also means it could be a and b yeah so uh, but uh, we know that at least at least one of one of the extremes is is not a and b it it, it it's uh, no, actually, actually we, we don't know this. It could it could also be A and B. So so uh, meaning inside is like there exists uh, like maximum and minimum lies inside of of this of this A and B closed interval. Like this. Okay. So so how to how to show this and this is this is very important theorem because it, this does not hold if the interval is not closed and this does not hold if um, if basically uh, for example the interval would be would not be bounded if it would be like, like infinite to the one side it does not hold and also if the function would not be continuous yeah so it is global minimum and global maximum of continuous function f okay so we are going we are going to to show this proof and this is this is very nice nice thing but uh, first we will need to know something about about limits of the sequences so so i will recall one one very nice very nice statement of of Weierstrass, which we are going to to use in the, in this proof so so Weierstrass, uh, basically, he proved uh, the following thing. Suppose that we have some sequence a n of numbers such that all of them lie between um, in inside of some interval. Let's say it's alpha, alpha, beta. Yeah. Then there exists uh, this. This sequence does not have to converge. It could be like some oscillating sequence going up and down, up and down between alpha and beta. It's not a problem, but there always exists there always exists a subsequence subsequence means that you only take some of the some of the elements of the sequence but infinitely many of them of course uh, which uh, converges yeah so so there exists uh, there exists some I don't know increasing sequence of integers i i zero i one i two um, and so on uh, such that that i n is smaller than i n plus one such that sequence a i n converges to to something converges to some some big a okay. So, so this is this is the subsequence. So, this, so these are these are indexes we are going to use. So, for example, if we uh, choose uh, or even even um, numbers in the in the sequence, then these these things will be even numbers. Okay. So, so we we need to we need to prove this this very nice very general statement of of Weierstrass. So, so how to how to do this? So. Uh, Maybe maybe you have heard about about uh, something called uh, Dirichlet or, or pigeonhole principle. So pigeonhole principle says something like, like if you have if you have uh, let's say k boxes like this, and then you have k plus one k plus one pigeons, and all each each pigeon is exactly in one box. Yeah, then then there exists. A box with at least two two pigeons. Yeah? So so in this setting we are going to use some infinite generalization of, of pigeonhole principle, which says suppose that you have two boxes. Yeah? So so in this setting we have two two boxes and we have infinity of pigeons. So then in one box there is infinitely many of them. Yeah, so 